And you built this thing yourself, right? 100%, yep. It was an FJ40, 1975. Well, we're down here at King of the Hammers 2024 and we're coming down Boone Road and what is one of the first things we see? We look off to the left and see this, I guess we could call it FJ45. I come on over here and who do I run into but Zach. How's it going? So Zach's been by the shop a couple times picking up parts. He's from Northern California and we share a lot of friends. Yep. Uh, and you built this thing yourself, right? 100%, yep, 100%. We so you sourced it. a bunch of parts from a bunch of local people, yep. um, ordered a lot of stuff online. Oh yeah. Uh, I know you went by and saw John Pardee up there in uh, Pollock Pines to get pieces to do this, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, he, uh, he hooked it up. He gave me the top, the sections, the windows, and he educated me on some things. Hooked so it up with the top. To start with, what did this vehicle start as? It was an FJ40, 1975. And you wanted it to look like a 45. A 45. Yeah, but your version of a 45. My version. Um, so this is a factory FJ hardtop, right? It's cut in half. And it's cut. So I actually cut, cut it. I cut the top right here. Yeah. And then I cut the body here. And then I actually cut the back part of the car off here. So this window would have been a big back window. So you yep. slice it in the middle, welded it, yep. and then welded this bottom section, yeah, which is see, a full curve. I'm not real good on the whole body work. So did you paint it yourself? Too? I did. I shot her it, in it, the garage. It's, it's a 10 footer for sure. Oh yeah. It yeah. looks great. Yeah. 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 It looks great um, so far. So your idea was we live up Northern California, Sierra's rock crawling Rubicon, a little bit of desert crossover, King of the Hammers stuff. Yeah. Um, a lot of travel on the suspension, linked front and rear. Yep. Um, so let's. Let, why don't we just start talking about what we have here? So you can't miss this. Yep. 43s. 43 inch. On 17 uh, inch bead locks. Mickey Thompsons. Yep. yep. And then the bead locks are what? Who They're makes from those? Sidetrack Off Road. Okay. Yeah. Yep. They, they gave me a great deal. I couldn't pass it up. So. And, yeah. Starting from the front back, I noticed you have a Super Duty axle. I Everybody's do. building from Super Duty. So it's right? an 08 Super Duty. Okay. Uh, I did uh, 1550 chromoly shafts in it. And are those just the Spicer ones that are yeah. cheap, like $399 no, for permanent. a pair of shafts? Yep. 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 Okay. And I threw the ARB in it and it has 538 gears. Okay. So, and I built the entire axle, trust it, everything. And you are three linked on this thing, and your third link is on the passenger side. Yes. Um, and that to clear the drive line and to get around the, the drive train. And that isn't like that. easy to make everything fit because this is an FJ40 frame. You have 27 inch center to center. Yep. So getting the steering box mounted in here, uh, track bar to clear, everything going on, and you still have yourself up travel. Looks like you have about five inches of up travel. Yep, that's about what I said it at five. Four and a half to five, depending Cur on where I'm at. Currently on King 2.0 shots. 2.0, soon to be 2.5. And these are 14 inch travel? 14 inch, yeah, okay. all the way around. All right, um, you got a Barnes truss there, um, and then the coilovers are mounted to the top of the knuckle, just like we sell our yep. stuff to do. Yep. Um, and you did do, it looks like, the weld in uh, Heim joint kit, you know, semi high steer on the yep. stock knuckles, right? Yep, exactly. Yep. Um, so, being that it's a Super Duty axle, it's got a uh, metric lug pattern, correct? Yeah. yeah. 8 on 170, yep. uh, full width. And then in the rear, what'd you use? You used a Sterling 10 I used a Sterling 10 and a half, and I put chrome molly shafts in it with an ARB, same and, thing. And it's got factory rear disc brakes. Yep, yeah, so I didn't have the, I left the factory parking brake in it just in case I needed ARB's it. ARB's front and rear, gotta love that. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, this is my favorite part of the whole rig. So, yep. Warren 8274, I assume it's a marketplace source because this looks like an old box. So older the housing. box, there's a guy on eBay that sells these boxes. Makes this metal one. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. that yeah, is, it's aluminum. That's an aluminum box, it, yeah. but it looks like the old one, the yep. old square one, yep. right? Um, and then the winch, where'd you find that? Uh, just sourcing Food it out, parts. same thing. Yep. yep. Marketplace, uh, the axles came from a buddy, a transmission was from a buddy, the transfer case I ordered directly from Atlas. Actually, excuse me, Filthy Motorsports I got okay. that from. Saginaw power steering outside yep. the frame, like you know, old cruiser style, what we would have done back in the day. Um, but all the way forward, I mean, the lines are outside the grill yeah. to keep your axle far forward without your pitman arm interfering with your steering. Yep. 
Uh, one thing I noticed, this thing has sway bars front and rear, right? Yeah. Uh, those are the Curry uh, Annie Rocks, um, which is now Rock Jock. Air bumps, and then uh, 1350 front drive shaft, right? 1350 front and 1410 rears. Well, let's pop the hood. Let's see what's underneath here. Well, it's not very pretty. This isn't a, a cruiser straight six, is it? No. We'll see if that stays up with the I'll wind. Hold. I'll hold. Yeah. So what's that? That's a 5.3 LM7. Uh, I got a Brian Tooley cam in it. Brian Tooley uh, LM7 or LS7 injectors and valve springs. I did the truck Norris cam in it. And then uh, just tried to wake it up a little bit. And you're still running the GM operating system, factory yep. computer. Yeah, I, I did all the HP tuner through it. Is so. it mass airflow? Nope. Uh, so, so you're running speed density. Or excuse me, it is. It was speed density, and I changed it back. I put the mass flow sensor. Oh, back I didn't on see it. it right up there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I switched it back. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it has a Griffin radiator in it with mechanical fan and shroud. That's 100. Like, percent I love to do that in all the builds. It never gets hot, right? Yeah. So my buddy Dave Gaby, he's a big cruiser dude. I was gonna go to electric fans, like you know, all the cool kids, and he was like, "No, you don't do that." Well, I agree 100. percent well, So. He definitely was correct. And it never gets hot. And it I, runs cool as a cucumber. And looking under the hood of this thing, I can appreciate that everything is this in its correct spots. I mean, hydro boost brakes, PSC hydro assist, you got proportioning valve going to the rear, um, hydraulic clutch, Yep. because it's a five speed. Hell we'll yeah. get to that. Um, but everything is kind of in its place. Even how you have the ARB dual compressor mounted there on the fender sideways to keep it underneath the hood, you yeah. know? Yeah, I didn't so, want to listen to it. I wanted it kind of put not away. Not taking up other space. I really wanted to do a York, but you can see I, I don't have much No room, room for the York. <laughs> All right, well, we'll close this. All right. Now, why don't uh, you show us the inside of this? Thing? Well, it's still, like I said, work in progress. So this is my favorite part because I don't miss any meals. I'm kind of a big guy. Oh, let's get around here. And uh, so that's, that's a, a bench seat right yeah, there. Yeah, it's a 53 inch. I called PRP and it said, hey, I want a bench seat. And they're, I told them what I was doing and they're like, um, all right. They and were they, able to build up that size, Yeah, huh? they made that seat. Yeah, and I did the, the so big 53, cushion. So 53 inch wide, big cushion. Yep. I mean, literally the, the, the door, the sidebar touches the doors on yes. each side. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And is it comfortable with? Yeah, uh, it is. It's even got heated seats. Like in one it. dude and three chicks, or maybe like yeah, two big we dudes. Yeah, won't say that a, to my wife. In a lap yeah, dog. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, t is it a tilt column? It is tilt column. Is that that's a factory Toyota tilt column? Is that what that is? Uh, no, that's GM. That is GM. Yeah, okay. it's out of a early Camaro. So still has a heater in here. Drink holders. I really appreciate yep. that. Drink coolers. Atlas four speed, so the twin sticks are here, and that's a 4.3 Atlas four speed there. Yep. And then this is for the crawl box, correct? Yep. So overall, you end up being 11 to one, plus you have the NV4500. Yeah, and it's the early GM model, so it has the 6.7. So our friend Nick Gray hooked you up with that thing. Yeah, he hooked it up. Yeah. And uh, I mean, other than that, you know, just the interior roll cage, it's pretty utilitarian in here, but it. Yeah, it's going to get a headliner and things like that. I mean, but all of that extra space. And there isn't really much behind the seat, no, is there? No, I basically got some tool bags behind the seats. I have a spare axles and things like that. I mean, very, very nice to be enclosed. It'd be a good snow rig. Oh yeah, that's that was where I was shooting for. Yep. As we work our way to the back on this thing, uh, did you, what is this component then? Is this a 45 bed? No, what so is that? I basically took this bed and I, uh, I made 90s with my tubing bender. I bought a square die and I just started bending corners and I basically just made a section and then I started just building it so together. So this is all hand built? 100%. So there's nothing of this back body that's, yeah. that's any original FJ or, or Cruiser or anything? Nothing, yeah. So that's pretty sweet because that is kind. Of, that is what the Cruiser looks like inside. Yeah, so I was trying to mimic the front hardware. Yeah. I, it was just, it was without the dies and everything and a big Power Max hammer. Yeah. So I just matched it as best yep. I could. And then I've just rolled the corners and then uh, used I like this detail. You put just like yeah, plastic beading over on. the top. Yeah. Yeah, to keep the edge down. And, and uh, all the, in like the bottom's aluminum and then I just, you know, sheet metal. Sheet defenders. metal inside the tub, but it's completely sealed. No mud, water getting in there. Yeah. Got that, that is an old school headache rack right there. So, so continued that square too. Yeah. Right? So I did the same thing. I, um, I built that whole headache rack trying to mimic like a 45 would be. Yeah. 
and then I kind of went a little over the top with the the newer light, lighting, the newer yep. lights, and then I used put a chase bar in it from Rigid. That was actually out for side by sides. Where'd you get that license plate? Oh, yeah, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> we, so we won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So you can notice in the back. You, the, the stock FJ frame comes to about right here. Yep. Right? Yep. And then you chop the frame off, and then that looks like two by three, maybe. Yep. Two by three, 120 wall. And okay. Then, uh, basically built the whole frame out the back, and I TIG welded it all together. Oh, you TIG welded? I know you got some shock towers from us. Yep. Those are universal shock towers. Yep. You built some gussets, sunk the shocks in. Um, 2.0s in the 2 back .0s again. 2.0s also, yeah. And how long are those? 14s also. 14s, okay. With uh, two inch travel air bumps in the back. And then if you look underneath there, I'm guessing, yep. So triangulated four link. Yep, triangulated and four link, upper triangulation. I'm telling you what, you do have a long length. Oh yeah. So th this has all the options for a lot of travel. Yep. 1410 in the rear it looks like. Yep, 1410, uh, those are TMR drive lines and the rear one, I had to have ADCO over in Shingle Springs. Uh, Ken hooked it up and nice. uh, balanced it for me because uh, I got a little rambunctious and I first made them with a 250 wall. So is, is that inch and a quarter Himes all the way around? Inch or? and a quarter Himes all the way around. For, for some reason, they look a little small, but I guess the rig is so big that uh, it towers over those things. Yeah, those are all <clears throat> yeah. inch and a, so. What do you got going right here? A uh, 26 gallon fuel tank, it's all aluminum. Same thing, I just uh, started laying it out with cardboard and figuring it out. And then uh, I wanted to go up over the axle, but I was kind of running into real estate issues with the upper links. It, it has just enough stick out where it's not gonna hang up, but yep. to give you a bunch of space. And then uh, you handmade this tailgate I as did. well. Yep. So all the details of like um, the corners and the edges and, and bead rolled in and then even the old, the, rich, the hardware stuff. Yeah, like, these are actually off of a YJ. Oh, is that what that these is? Are YJ, they look familiar. These are YJ hinges yep. for their tailgate. So I took those and then Jeep taillights. Yep, yep, yep. Which, you, you can't know, go wrong with those taillights. You might though. piss some taillight guy, or some uh, Toyota guys off, but it's still, I mean, you got the emblems in here, factory Toyota emblems. Yep, yep. It's, it's really a classic um, look at your idea of the the perfect FJ45, right? Yeah, I'm happy with it. And uh, LS engine, NV4500, Atlas four speed, one tons, chrome ollies. Um, I, I mean, wh what else, what are you missing here? Uh, 2.5s and some bypasses. We also like to tell people what doesn't work on certain vehicles yeah. and it's nothing to be ashamed of. One of the things you found out here is the yeah, the you smaller can see, yeah, yeah. rock jock, um, anti rock sway bar, the arms are bending as well as the drop down yeah, links. I push the you drop know, down link. This I... is basically just a long bolt that's yeah. a lot of pressure on it. So uh, we were talking, and I think we decided this weight and this size warrants a much bigger sway bar. Yeah, we're going to go to um, 37. And uh, go to something like 35 spline and a bigger arm. Yep. And then that you could take your shock and move it from back there to, you know, exactly. up front of the trailing arm. So, not that you wanted to make more work for yourself because yeah. this totally works fine, but that would be a cool upgrade. Love the uh, side exit exhaust right there. Very classic. So anyway, I mean, just proves again that anybody at home that has some extra time, some good friends to help hook you up on parts and uh, yeah, the wherewithal to do it, you could build something like this in your garage. Absolutely. Come down to the hammers and... Funny story, I started building this thing in a a 10 by 20 shelter logic tent. Oh, absolutely. Because I was selling my house and needed my garage space for furniture and everything else. Yep. And that's where it started. And then uh, things didn't work out. So we put hey, it back in the garage. That would work as a good paint booth once it's done to use that. Believe it or not, I've uh, I painted uh, painted it in there. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it exactly. worked great. Yeah. Repurposed. Yeah. One yeah. of our customers now has his in his wife's greenhouse. Oh, you know, <laughs> California, what's the matter? Yeah. 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 Well, totally EPA legal. Wonderful, FJ. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll see you back up at the shop and Absolutely. maybe on the Rubicon wheeling. For sure. Thank you. Thank you.